Today we're going to do the startling and astonishing 1971, I think it was 1971, Hocus Pocus by Focus riff. Jan Ackerman, the uh, amazing guitarist. If you haven't heard his stuff, that guy can shred um, like you wouldn't believe. All right. Uh, anyway, we're going to do the uh, just the riff, uh, which is cool enough. We're not going to do the solo today. All right. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, I think of the riff in three parts. The first part is this. Okay. The second part is this, and it's got a little bit tougher edge. is played before it goes into that uh, cool little yodeling solo is this. All right, so let's do the first part. And the first part is probably the, the neatest because he uses a lot of very jazzy chords. So the first part starts out with a sort of, um, I, I call it, it's kind of like the Ted Nugent stranglehold riff. But of course, this this I think predates it. Um, but anyway, it's this right here. All right, and <clears throat> you do that twice. Basically, what you're doing is you're hammering on on the fourth string. You're playing from the fifth fret, hammering on to the seventh, and then playing three more times, like so. And now just add that open uh, fifth string. You can palm mute a little bit if you want. Um, and anyway, just play it a little bit syncopated. Sounds great. And that's what that is. All right, and then it's a series of a few chords here. The first is an E minor seventh. I should say I have tab on this, so you can download this and see all these jazz chords. Um, but anyway, E minor seventh. F major 7th, C major 7th, B flat major 7th, and E 7th with a sharp 9. And yes, that last chord is the so-called Hendrix chord. All right, that Hendrix and Stevie Ray used all the time. Now, um, that's the first riff. Uh, here's the second riff. The second riff starts out the same. This one's a little more straightforward and, and understandable from a rock perspective. It's an E chord, a pa just a power E. F power. D power. B power. Back to E power. Okay, so again, it's this. And finally, the last part is simply a, a power chord, C power chord, D power chord, D power chord, to F power chord, to G power chord. And then your A, uh, I'm sorry, E seventh with a sharp ninth again. And the game starts again with. And so forth. All right. Now, what's a, a little bit cool about it is this is clearly, um, that first riff is clearly a jazz riff 
that's adapted to rock. And to prove that, I'm going to take off my distortion, put a little jazzier tone on this. And instead of playing our, I'll just play an A minor 7th. And then I'll play chords that are somewhat diatonic to C major. E, e major 7th. Sounds really jazzy when you just uh, when you just take off the distortion and play that. So clearly, uh, Mr. Ackerman knew what he was doing there. Now, um, from a if you want to play around with that a little bit, you can, and it makes it uh, fun to do. Uh, the real important thing is to maintain that bass line. So if if you listen to it. So that's the bass line. Oops. Sorry. Um, so if you just maintain that bass line, you can substitute different, uh, different chords in there. So keep the flavor of them. So the minor seventh kind of makes sense to keep like a minor. Uh, major seventh, you can substitute a major if you want. C, you can C major seventh, you can substitute your major chord if you want. And then check this out. You can play a B flat 13th if you want. And go to this uh, E sharp with a sharp not E with a sharp 9. And you can even add the, the top string as well, and that kind of makes it sound even messier. Anyway, it is a really cool thing to play around with, so enjoy. All right, we'll see you on down the road. Thank you.